It's the Games and Graps podcast. This week, it's Graps Heavy as we discuss NXT TakeOver Phoenix, the Royal Rumble, and an eventful Raw and SmackDown. What's happening, everybody? Welcome to the Games and Graps podcast. This is episode 89. I'm Sonny, and with me, as always, is Finn Steele. Hello. Finn, how you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm cold. It's been cold this week. It's been cold. Maybe icy, frosty. Super cold. I can't. You know what? We moan in the summer. <laughs> it's just. I mean, to be honest, if you go back and listen to podcasts from this time of the year, um, <laughs> from years gone by, yeah. so speak like we're really old and we've been <laughs> for many years. Um, back in the old, good old days. Back in the good old days when <laughs> we were a silent podcast with just words on the screen. <laughs> um, the piano playing but, background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, we, we always moan about the cold or the heat, depending on what's going on. Yeah, we're never happy. No, we're not. No, no there's, no, there's no weather in the world that is, uh, is going to make the two of us like, fine, this is good weather. Yeah. Seriously. I'm all right with it. <laughs> I can game. I'm not too hot. I'm not too cold. It's all good. It doesn't exist. doesn't exist. <laughs> um, so I feel like I also, I feel like I'm still recovering from a super long weekend yeah. of wrestling I'm not kidding. and yeah. broken sleep and just not sleeping enough in general, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so, um, like with wrestling. that said, there is an, uh, so much wrestling. Too much. <laughs> uh, we've got a lot to talk about this week, we so do. we'll get straight into it. But first, yep. um, our video game streaming has now moved full time to Twitch. Yes. The, uh, Videos of the streams will still go onto our YouTube, but um, I've transformed the Sunny Club Twitch channel into the Games and Graps Twitch channel, so that is now twitch.tv forward slash Games Graps. Nice. If Finn is good enough on the video version of this, there will be a thing just on the bottom of the screen. Yes. Maybe. <laughs> if Maybe. I remember and have time, yes. I mean, you should <laughs> hear the audio and be like, oh. This is fair point. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Anyway, what have you been playing this week? Well, indeed. Um, right, Red Dead 2 came out. It did. It's good. We spoke about it last <laughs> week, I think. We did, so yeah. We only saw each other a few days ago. Yeah, we're actually yeah, recording <laughs> earlier than we usually do. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah. We talked about it last week, but it's still good. It's still <laughs> it's really awesome. good, yeah. I'm uh, still playing in hardcore mode, uh, because I'm a badass. Um, mm. I've just gotten up to... This happened first encounter with Lickers. I snuck past one, being all stealthy, after about 27 failed attempts. Um, and then like, killed the other one, because I like couldn't avoid it, so I struck it to death. Um, and then after, yeah, just, just before, just got my three medallions, so I'm just going to the police station. Yep. Uh, it's better to encounter my first boss fight, uh, which I have actually done once. I one attempted it, which I killed it, but I left me with literally no ammo. There like three pistol bullets left and like one shotgun bullet left. So I was like, well, gonna need to do that again because I've got no ammo for anything else. Yeah, fair enough. Um, but yeah, it's still great. I still think what's getting to it, uh, playing it more. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I've um, I've played a bit more of it as well. I've also got the three medallions, and uh, uh, I must be on the way to the boss fight as well. I haven't done it yet, but uh, I must be on the way there. Yeah, definitely. We've got three medallions, and yeah, it's literally the next thing. Yeah, fair enough. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah it's, and it's awesome. I just love it. It's I love so it good. so much. It's, it's, so well made. It's the perfect remaster. Yeah, it really is. I know we did speak about it last week, but it doesn't change the fact that it is the perfect remaster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I love that it runs on the uh, the RE engine, which Sorry. obviously makes sense, because at the end of the day, it is Resident Evil. This is... But now, I'm unsure of what I want to see next. Hmm. Do I want a Resident Evil 3 remake? Yes. Do I want Resident Evil 8? Yes. But <laughs> do I also want Dino Crisis? <laughs> yes. Yeah, we all, all, all so I things. want all of these all things. things all at once. But it's taken this long. By next month. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. Capcom. Yeah, Cheers. Pretty soon, because Resident <laughs> Evil 2 is definitely very short. <laughs> um, but I want all of these things. Yes. But I, I don't know what I want first. <laughs> Uh, I reckon Resident Evil 3 would make, make sense. Because they can yeah. use the same environments, like 90% of them from Resident Evil 2. It can't, can't be that difficult. Come on, Capcom. Uh, it can't be that difficult. <laughs> like, we're the experts in making video games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I can definitely see that coming next. Um, it's been rumoured, so it wouldn't surprise me that got announced sometime soon. Yep. Maybe E3. I think if people uh, bother Capcom enough with Dino Crisis, I think that <laughs> could happen. Maybe. You never know. You never know. Um, and you have to believe there will always be a new Resident Evil. Probably. They'll be really late. I'm not sure what they're going to... Where they go... Well, they'll go... Jesus Christ. Where they will go from here. Wednesday Words. evenings are hard for you, aren't they? They are. I've still caught up in my sleep from bloody Boy Rumble. No, I haven't. Uh, <laughs> I'm really tired. I'm running on fumes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, who knows where they'll go from there. Because um, like, obviously, 7 was like a very like VR, central, first-person horror experience. Uh, less less shooty-shooty, bang-bang, more duck and hide. 
Um, so yeah, who knows what the future holds, for Resident Evil. Okay. Um, I mean, I I think I want a re- I want a Resident Evil Eight, but I want it still first person. Mm-hmm. But I want it to be a continuation from Seven, because obviously at the end of Seven, if you haven't played it, just close your ears now, I guess. Yeah. But you are saved by Chris Redfield. Uh, yeah. And right. that team. Ah, uh, yeah, of course, yeah, because yeah, they had to de- not hear a DLC after that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is that set after? Uh, I think so. If I'm right, I can't remember. Either way, but I want it to be a continuation of that story because it's obviously they can do it. Oh yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be the same family or anything like that, but they're just a a bit more explanation because obviously all of this stuff that it happens in Resident Evil Seven is new to the the main ca- uh, protagonist. Yeah. Um, it almost like it's a, a fresh start for the series. Hence why it was just called Resident Evil, even though they snuck a seven into the yeah. into the into the graphic for it. Love it. Um, so I want to see a continuation of of that story, maybe even from that guy's perspective. Yeah, why not? Ethan. Ethan, yeah. Yeah. So maybe even from that guy's perspective, because he's still alive. Yeah, he's alive. Yeah. Yeah. So more of that. So continue cool. that. So have a team working doing that, and then have a team doing Resident Evil Three remake as well. Yeah, seriously. There we go. We've solved, we've solved that problem. Yeah, yeah perfect. It's done. Sorry. And then when they've done Resident Evil Remake, <laughs> then we'll we'll have Dino Crisis. Thank you, please. Yes, thank you. Right. Please and thank you, rather. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's all it. Cheers, Capcom. Good, yep. Um, what else? Uh, Kingdom Hearts. Back him mm. out. It's good. I've only played for about an hour of it so far. It's all I have time to do. Okay. Um, but from what I've played so far, it's, yeah, I'm already in love with it. It's good. Okay. Talk to me about Kingdom Hearts. Tell me. It's good. Okay. <laughs> can, you, can you go a little bit more in depth than that, or is it just good? No, it's good. Okay. Uh, but no, it's just it's just amazing. So I think the way to start with it. So I played all of them. Um, obviously I played the AC remasters, which are all excellent. Uh, this has had the uh, graphics upscaled like it's like to do like 100. percent It looks amazing. It literally looks like a Pixar movie. Mm-hmm. I know some people say that like every time a new you no know, generation of game consoles come out, it looks like a Pixar movie. But this literally does look like a Pixar movie. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, there are Pixar movies in the game, so you know. Yeah, there are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it looks amazing. It plays amazing, just as well as it always has, if not better. Um, yeah, I'm looking. I was I've only played about an, hour, about an hour of it so far, so I haven't got stuck into all like all the like, bits and pieces. So, are you but, still at the f- the first bit where you in where you Olympus? Yeah, I'm still at Olympus. Yeah, okay. went to Hades, which is hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> uh, went to Hercules. So, uh, yeah, it's still it's. I'm looking forward to get properly stuck into it. And uh, yes, it's good. Well, I love it. I've been playing it as well. Ah, interesting. What do and you this think? Is, this is new for me, right? <laughs> I, I haven't played 1 and 2 and whatever else is out there. Point. Oh no, who, I don't know. I haven't played any of that. <laughs> so this is my first real experience with Kingdom Hearts. And I didn't know what to expect going in. Um, and I, So I played it last night and instantly like fell in love. I was like, <laughs> oh my God, this is just... It's so pretty to look at. Yeah. Um, and I was expecting an RPG, and it isn't a traditional RPG. Oh, no. um, it's to me, it's like an action adventure game with RPG elements. Yeah. Now this is much. obviously somebody from the outside coming into that world. Yeah. But the, the the story doesn't. I mean, I'm sure the story, if you go deep into the lore, is incredibly complicated. Oh yes. But from <laughs> my perspective, it's uh, save the seven hearts, beat the bad guys. Have fun in the Disney worlds. Basically, did he did he watch any of the like um, story catch up things no. on there? No, fair enough. I jumped straight in. <laughs> I was like, I haven't got time for this shit. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump straight in and wing it. <laughs> and wing it, I am. Um, but it's really really good. I mean, I think I've probably played just a little bit more than you. I think I'm getting towards the end of the Hercules bit. Nice. But I think it's really good. I love the way that the combat works. Combat's awesome. It's really really good. Uh, I like the the sort of the moves where they all come together. Yeah, yeah. And they do like a super move. I'm still trying to figure it all out because obviously, you know, you can do magic and you have to use the D-pad and stuff to switch the attacks that you're going to do. Um, but I'm I'm getting used to that pretty quickly. But it, the one thing I really like about it is that it isn't intimidating. No, not really. You know, like some RPGs and some, you know, action games, especially if you, you're coming in at a later installment in the series, uh, it can be really intimidating. But this is just like, well, there's Goofy, there's Donald <laughs> Duck, they're your mates. Uh, you're this guy, voiced by Haley Joel Osman, and <laughs> just right, you're off to to see Hercules first. I'm like, oh okay, that's, yeah. that, that, that's fine, that works for me. Yeah. Uh, so I'm beating up monsters. I'm using magic uh, to 
I'm using the wet magic to put out the fire guys, and uh, this makes sense. And it's like, okay, well, this is this is great. I'm yeah. literally exploring everything and hitting every vase that oh, yeah. I can do, we do that. to break that's stuff. Really that's everything is work. They can't <laughs> spell money. Hey, eh? they can't spell money. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They can spell money. M U double N Y. Yeah, yeah. I'm that's, assuming that's obviously a thing. That, that's that's a currency in Guinea Hearts. It's called there you go. That's fine, and it's fine. <laughs> but it's it's not intimidating, and I really like it. To be honest, I've actually been thinking about it all day. Cool. And how I can't wait to to play more awesome good that's got a new kingdom hearts fan yeah and to be honest i do want to go back and play <laughs> the others but i'm, I'm gonna play through this yeah uh, to be honest the platinum does doesn't look impossible but yeah it's definitely doable people have it already somehow <laughs> yeah i mean they've probably had it from square yeah, yeah, yeah. for a little while yeah yeah um i don't reach out to square yeah <laughs> so they'll, they'll just shut me down straight away probably but uh yeah, yeah. uh i really like it and i'm glad that i did decide to play it because I said I wasn't going to because I haven't played the others, uh, <laughs> but I'm glad I did, and I'm excited to explore the other worlds because the worlds just come. They look stunning. Yeah, they look so good. Obviously, Hercules is a cartoon, like a you know the one of the old Disney classics. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know the 3D world that they've made of it, it's just it's incredible to look at and incredible to to play in and. Uh, for that and that reason alone, I can't wait to see the other worlds, and that enough is enough for me to just want to carry on playing it. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. I can't, yeah, I can't wait for myself to play it some more. And uh, yeah, if you, if you do feel like playing the other ones, absolutely do because they're still all, all amazing. Um, and yeah, it's yeah, I love Kingdom Hearts. Always have. Cool. And it's just feels good to be able to playing a new Kingdom Hearts game again, yeah. like a brand new proper full entry. And yeah, I love it. Fair enough. It's good stuff. And um, that's about it. We more Sony Three Dancing and playing. Oh, it's still good. Yeah. Um, other than that, that's about it, I think. I'm going to jump into Persona 5 dancing. Nice. Okay. Um, well, I'll talk, I'll, we'll talk about that next week as well. Yeah. Uh, because okay. it'll be interesting to. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see it and play it and just. I love. We've discussed the rhythm game thing anyway, <laughs> but. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm really looking forward to, to jumping into that and playing it. So. Cool. Yeah. Um, awesome. We've pretty much covered what I've been playing. Because, um, you know, when two major releases hit, <laughs> pretty much within days of each other, that's all you have time to play. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> uh, I played a game called Animal Super Squad that I got sent. Oh, yeah. And you can see the video on demand for that on our YouTube channel now. Nice. Uh, it's a game from the company that PewDiePie owns. Oh, interesting. And it's like a, it's a physics-based game, like in the same vein as Trials. Right, okay. So, um... You unlock different vehicles, and you basically play as a chicken. Hmm. And the only vehicle I've unlocked at the minute is a toilet. <laughs> nice, okay. And you just have to complete the course, basically. And it's physics-based, it is funny, it's nice to look at, and it plays really well. So um, it's already been out, it's already out on PC, but it's coming to Xbox One in the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, so that's, that's definitely worth checking out. Um, I've played a bit more of the Grand Tour. Oh yeah, I played that. So well, I can't yeah. get enough of that. I think that's really good as well. Um, it's probably not really good, but for eleven quid, it's good. It's you know? fine, yeah. You know, <laughs> uh, it's, it's it's fun. It's fun yeah. to play, and you get new brand new content every week. Yeah, and great. You don't have to pay extra for it, and that, in my opinion, is a bargain. Yeah. But otherwise, yeah, we have pretty much covered what um I've been playing while because we've been playing pretty much the same stuff. Pretty much, yeah. Fair uh, play. To be honest, it's probably a good thing because we have so much yeah. wrestling stuff to cover this week. Boy, do we! Uh, I don't think we <laughs> have any. Other gaming news? Uh, not really. Nothing really major happened, I don't think, this week. I think the only major thing that happened this week, and to be honest, with not being a PC gamer, it doesn't affect me in the slightest, um, but Metro Exodus, I don't know if you saw this or not. Oh, yeah. Um, obviously, game, games on PC usually release through Steam, am I right in saying? Mm-hmm. But this isn't going through Steam. Steam pre-orders are being um, honoured. Still, and you will be able to get your pre-order through Steam. Oh, right, okay. But Metro Exodus is now going to be playable through Epic Games, like version of Steam, I guess. Right, okay, interesting. Um, and people are pissed about it. I guess people, you know, like to keep their Steam library clean or whatever. Uh, this is why I don't play on PC. <laughs> Stuff yeah, like this, I don't get it. I don't understand <laughs> what the big uproar is. Like, oh, no, now you can't like... play through Steam. Now you've got to play it through this Epic Games. Thing. Yeah, I mean, Steam is just convenient more than anything. Um, yeah, I don't really too bothered about having different installers and things to play through, as long as the game works. I don't know what it matters, really, isn't it? I guess um, so. I mean, um, people don't seem to care about Steam achievements. Um, I'm assuming there are people out there that do. Probably. I didn't. But, I mean, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, this is why I'm a console player. You just put the disc in or download the game and 
it just plays. Yeah, exactly. Just no yeah. messing around needed. <laughs> no faff required. Yes. Yeah, no faff required. Um, on the subject of Metro Exodus, uh, we should have that prior to launch. Mm, uh, so uh, you can expect to see that on our Twitch channel and also our YouTube channel. So that'll be cool. Nice. Look forward to that. Yeah, very exciting. Cool. Also, I have reached out to Microsoft for Crackdown. Nice. Now <laughs> there's still radio silence on Crackdown, but next Tuesday on the um, like their Xbox like event thing that they have inside Xbox. Oh yeah. Uh, they are showing Crackdown. Oh, finally. So a week <laughs> before release, they are actually going to show Crackdown. Oh. Um, it would be awesome if Microsoft sent me a copy of Crackdown. It'd be nice. And then we can we can look at it and give our thoughts on it. Yeah. But it is free on day one with Game Pass anyway. So if we don't get it before, we will still talk about it because yeah. we'll get to play it anyway. So why not? Yeah. And that's that's it for gaming, I think. Yeah, I think so. Cool. Good stuff. Um, so wrestling happened. Wrestling did happen. A lot of wrestling. A happened. lot of wrestling. I mean, good God. Before we get into it, uh, there's been some rumours and news about possible uh, people wanting to leave WWE. Yep. Uh, the main one is uh, Dean Ambrose, of mm. course, which WWE have confirmed. Um, but we're not totally convinced that this is like real or you know able to work. Yeah, um, I'm. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, when I saw the announcement by WWE yesterday. I was instantly convinced that it was real. Yeah. But I sat and thought about it a little bit more, and I was like, WWE don't do this. Yeah, like, when was the last time that we announced someone's asked been you know asked for their release prior to them being released? That, yeah. It just doesn't happen before. No, it, just, it hasn't happened. <laughs> I mean, I can't think of a time that it's happened ever. Yeah, exactly. If somebody out there in internet land wants to prove me wrong, I, I'm happy for you to do it. Yeah. But to my knowledge, I mean, you know, people get future endeavoured, and that... They get a, a tiny little message on WWE.com. Yeah. So and so has been released. We wish them all the best in their future endeavors. Yes. But this, it was, it was different. It was that you know they they put his real name in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then continued to call him Dean in the uh, in the in the text that followed. But something just seems a little bit off. Are they? I think this could very well be a work. Yeah. The fact that they on War this week they had to like weird segment with him. Like sitting down in the ring, about to say something, but before it got interrupted, it's like that kind of feeds into it as well. It's like, yeah. So yeah, I, I think this is probably going to turn out to be some sort of work. Be great if it is. Yeah, I hope so because I don't want to see Dean going. Is you know. It's yeah, um, I, like I like Dean. I mean, he's not my favorite wrestler. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't think he's that good as a champion when he is a champion. Mm. Uh, but again, that's only my opinion. People really love Dean Ambrose, and I can see why. Yeah, yeah. For me. Yeah, I do think this is a work. Uh, people will obviously disagree with us and be like, "No, no, no he's definitely asked for his release." This, you know, it, it was, you know, I've seen people on Twitter, like people who do get paid to report wrestling, yeah. be like, "No, no, no, this came from people backstage and not WWE themselves." WWE just confirmed it. It's like he works for WWE, so yeah, I guess. <laughs> but something just doesn't seem right about it. I've never seen anything like this before, and I've been watching wrestling, um, WWE specifically for over twenty-five years. Yeah, exactly. And I've never seen anything like this. Um, you know, on Raw, he was featured very heavily. You know, he had a segment with Triple H and Seth Rollins at the beginning of the show. And then he sat down in the middle of the ring and he was going to say something before being interrupted by Nia Jax. And I, there's just something not right about it. I'm sure we will know more. April is a long way away. Yeah, yeah. Long you know, it's still like three months away. Yeah. And yes. a lot can happen in three months. So I'm, I'm sure more information will come out. But I still, I think the telltale sign will be how heavily he is featured on TV between now and then. Yeah. And there's something in me that thinks that could lead to a possible match with Triple H at WrestleMania. Maybe. Maybe. Um, it looks like he's heading for a few with Nia Jax. <laughs> Who knows? Because uh, intergender, in, intergender wrestling is apparently now a thing again in WWE. Interesting, yeah, yeah. Hmm, Who knows? Um, indeed, Ambrose. The other one was uh, Hideo Itami, which I am more inclined to believe is actually a thing, because <laughs> uh, he's been buried and stuck on Two Five Live for uh, a while. Not just buried is in that sense, just you know, stuck on Two Five Live, not being seen a whole lot. Um, yeah, the problem with Two Hundred Five is the fact that it's a short show and they have a lot of talent. Yeah, yeah. And it there's only with only one championship belt, not everybody c- can be champion. Yeah. The I feel bad for Hideo, to be honest, because obviously he came into WWE with this, you know, big hype surrounding him. Obviously, he was Kenta. 
in mm. J- uh, back in Japan. And he came with this big hype, made a real big deal. Obviously, Hulk Hogan went over to Japan and they signed his WWE contract in the ring or whatever. And then yeah. he was lo- it looked like he was heading for a, a really decent push in NXT. And then he got injured. Yeah, yeah. Then he came back and then he got injured again. And it was... Wasn't great. I think, from what I read at least, he was the one who was supposed to beat Kevin Owens for the NXT Championship at the Beast in the East event oh, yeah. that they had on the WWE Network. Because mm. obviously he was in Japan and that would have made perfect sense. But unfortunately, uh, Hideo got injured and Finn Balor stepped in and Finn Balor did win the belt. Yeah, yeah. I would have been interested to see what would have happened if we could, you know, go to that alternate universe yes, where seriously. it wasn't Finn and it was Hideo and see where the two career paths would be going. Yes. But unfortunately for Hideo, uh, they moved into 205. I'm not going to... I don't mean this in a horrible way, but he did look in poor shape. <laughs> As, yeah, he's... He, he definitely feel like he looks more in shape when he first debuted in NXT. For sure. Uh, I mean, if you yeah. go look at his NXT stuff, like the very early NXT stuff, he's really trim. Yeah, He yeah. looks in great shape, but on 205, he just looks disinterested and just out of shape. Yeah. Which is a shame. But, uh, yeah, just, just one of bad luck for a time, I think. One I think else. so, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, everybody, there's been an outpouring on social media of, you know, happiness for Hideo that he's had his release and you're just thanking him for, you know, I guess, He's probably taught people stuff, you know, oh, yeah. just just no how he just for the fact. I mean, he's been in WWE for a while now. Oh yeah. So uh, there's been an outpouring of love for Hideo Itami slash Kenta because he's now changed his Twitter name back. Oh yeah, I saw that. To actually. Kenta. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wish him all the best. I hope he, I hope he finds happiness as a performer elsewhere. Yes. Um, unlike what people on the internet think, I don't think he's AEW bound. <laughs> Dude, everyone needs WWE is AEW bound. Come on. Everyone knows that. Yeah. <laughs> that Cody gif is doing my head in. <laughs> what, the one with the, that one? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, the one where he cups his ear. Yes. But not everybody's WWE is AEW based. Um, bound. Bound. No, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Otherwise, it just turns into... A, I mean, obviously, he has asked for his release, but if he was going to be going somewhere in the company, they'd be doing something with him. Yeah. So he's not going to go... They won't want to be known as a WWE reject <laughs> playground. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Seriously. I mean, that's what WCW was starting to be known as for, you know, towards the, towards the latter end. stages of WCW. Yeah, seriously. Uh, AEW, Ooh, what I think they'd be best to do, and this is just my opinion and my take on it, is have your core superstars that people already know and then build a, new superstars around them. That makes sense. Like NXT. I like NXT, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, there's there's so many wrestlers out there now that the market is booming for wrestlers. Oh yeah. So you don't have to take wrestlers from WWE and give them a platform um, in AEW because let's be honest, right now AEW is a step down from WWE. Pretty much, yeah. Just like going to Impact is a step down from WWE. Everything is a step down from WWE. It's the biggest wrestling company in the entire world, yeah. Re- regardless of whether you like it or not. That is fact. Yeah. So AEW much. right now is unproven and is a, a step down. Jericho, um, you know, he's their marquee guy. <laughs> yeah. You know, we don't know what Kenny Omega's doing in the minute. The the consensus is, I believe, that he would be going to AEW Makes sense. to go and wrestle with his friends. So you've got Kenny Omega, you've got the books, you've got Cody, and you've got Jericho. Yeah, exactly. And that's your that's your core. Now build around that. Yes, that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely right. So NXT, NXT take over Phoenix. That happened. Yeah, and it was amazing. It was so good. I love so it. So good. So so good. Um, yeah, so the first match on there was uh, the War Raiders versus the Undisputed Era for the tag team titles. Mm. Cool entrance. Very cool. I liked it. Yeah, I did as well. I like what Triple H said in his uh, like Facebook conference thing that he has after. Oh yeah. It was like, if you have access to Vikings, you use Vikings. Oh, of course. Why Which you? is sound logic. Yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, the entrance was really cool. I like the War Raiders. So, yeah, me lot. too. I love the music, everything. Everything about them. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, and yeah, Undisputed Era, of course, always excellent. Of course. And yeah, it's a really, really good match. Solid match. Um, liked a lot. And of course, the uh, War Raiders won. And are yeah. now your new tag team champions. Which is 
good, I think. Yeah, very good, yeah. Well deserved. I mean, I don't... To be honest, to be over, I don't think Undisputed Era need those belts. No, I don't think so. Um, they'll get them back, I'm, I'm sure of that. Yeah, probably. Um, but I think the War Raiders, it would have been stupid to not put the belts on them. Yeah. Because they, <laughs> if, if, they, if they don't win the belts, that slows any momentum that they have. Yeah, pretty and much, they're yeah. just another NXT tag team. Yeah, but absolutely. to put the belts on them um, was definitely the smartest booking decision. Um, but yeah, I mean, Undisputed Era are awesome. Yeah, they're so good. And they're not going away. Uh, they're probably not going to AEW. <laughs> yeah, well, you never know. They've lost a match. God, they're being buried. Send them to AEW. God. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, so yeah, that's the predictions. Um, I said Undisputed Era would win because I'm stupid about it. Mm. And uh, you said, well, wait, did you get a point there? Ding. Ding. Yes. Um, but yeah, excellent match. More please. Really good match. The War Raiders are insanely agile for two oh, yeah. big guys. It's insane, you know? yeah. It's not bad to be like that. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, it's... The standout person in this match for me was Roderick Strong. I thought uh, he was awesome. Yeah. I great. think Roderick Strong is great anyway, and I'm a big fan of his, and I've been a big supporter of his since he joined WWE from Ring of Honor. Oh, yeah. But he's great. I mean, geez. I mean, th- them, them four guys as a group... They have got one incredibly bright future ahead of them oh, yeah. uh, in WWE. And it's going to be very interesting to see how it plays out from here. Uh, I think they'll stick around in NXT for a little while longer. Probably. But before the year is out, I expect them to be on the main roster and be a really big deal. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Um, so now, of course, we had uh, Matt Riddle versus uh, Cassius Ono. Mm. Oh, no. Another good match. I liked it. Yeah, it was good. I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah. It was, um, it was hard hitting like I thought it would be. Yeah, yeah. But Matt Riddle is... He's a ready-made superstar. Oh, yeah, seriously. He didn't need shoes. No. <laughs> no, no shoes required. No shoes required, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, isn't, yeah, that wasn't any good. I love him. But this was a good showing for Cassius Ono as well. Yeah, yeah. I do like him. And, I again, I always have. He, his time in NXT has been strange. They've, I mean, he's right in what he is. He, that, what they're making him say is spot on. Pretty much. Like, and I love that honesty about his run. He was brought in, and he was like made a big deal out of. And then when everyone else came in who followed, like Bobby Roode and uh, Cassie, and sorry, uh, Matt Riddle and the Undisputed Era, etc., he was sort of pushed to the back of the the line a little bit. He was, yeah. Um, I think he's taking more of a training role. I mean, I've said this sort of all along. I don't think his role is is to be NXT champion. I think his role is to put people over makes sense and sort of then transition into sort of a trainer role when he's done and I now see the rest of his career being with WWE in some fashion oh yeah Uh, so he doesn't need to win these kind of matches what he's there to do is make Matt Riddle who is obviously the next big superstar um, to make him look like the superstar that he is oh yes absolutely and yeah great match again Uh, Matt Riddle obviously won uh, which you both had in predictions, so yep. that's a point, a point each. Ding, uh, ding. Ding, ding. And then, of course, we had uh, Ricochet defending his uh, North American Championship against Johnny Gorg- um Yeah, Johnny Gorgano. And again, an amazing match. This <laughs> match was insane. So good. This was match of the weekend by some distance. Oh, yes. And th- to be honest, by the end of the year, it could very well be match of the year. It was <laughs> that good. It went to me. Just an incredible showing from two guys who were just so... that They define modern professional wrestling. Oh, yes. I mean, Ricochet is just an insane talent, and he thoroughly deserves to be put on the pedestal that he is. Mm -hmm. And it's great that he's getting to showcase these talents now on the big stage in WWE. Um... Johnny Gargano the, the the spots that the two of them put together are just unique yeah and so different to anything you see you know coming from the main roster it just it, the, NXT really does put the main roster wrestlers to shame and it's it's a shame that the main roster guys aren't given the freedom like the NXT guys are to 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 express their talents like that but these two guys, the chemistry is unbelievable. They have wrestled each other all over the world, so they're no oh, yeah. strangers to one another. But this match was really, really special. And yeah, it told so, a, yeah. just a fantastic story. Yeah, we really did. Um, so, of course, Johnny Gargano ended up on top and winning. He's a brand new uh, Northbergen champion. Yep. Which is excellent, well deserved, uh, for sure. 
Uh, we both had him in predictions, so did a point each. And uh, yeah, just amazing match. And it's another reason why the North American Championship is so important. Yeah. Uh, to NXT, I mean, you know, ages ago now, probably you know over a year and a half ago, I was sort of saying on the podcast, this podcast, that NXT needed that mid card championship because th- there are a lot of wrestlers in NXT, and it goes back to the problem that 205 has that not everybody can be champion. Yeah, yeah. But if you can build a division around a group of wrestlers and have them fight for that championship, it, you know, it gives them something to do. Because otherwise fans moan. They're like, oh God, Ricochet should be NXT champion. It's like, well, make the North American championship just as important. Yeah, yeah. You know, exactly. some lineage so far, Adam Cole, Ricochet, Johnny Gargano. Yeah, pretty been good. Mm. I mean, to yes. me, that makes the championship seem important because you're not... You're giving these guys good runs with the belt as well, and you're making it feel important. Yeah. And another thing that's unique about NXT is these championships aren't shoved down your throat every week. Not everything is featured all at once. So one week you will get the women's championship, and the focus will be there. One week the tag team, one week the North American, one week the, you know, the the NXT championship. Yeah, yeah. And do you need a mid card championship for me? Yeah, even if sense. it's not being contested by mid card guys, and that yeah. is why the North American Championship feels so important as a championship. Yep, I completely agree. Yep, uh, I agree with that. It's one important thing with this match, which happened, was of course uh, Gargano was also using the concrete underneath the pad. Yeah, uh, the padding, uh, which is showing you more of a heelish shine, more of a desperate to win side, uh, much like his partner, which mm. we'll might get into later. Um, <laughs> same, of course, we had um, the women's match, which of course uh, Shayna Baszler versus uh, Bianca Belair. Which uh, was good. Yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. It's good. Not great, but it was good. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I thought it, I did think it was good. I mean, yeah. to be honest, it was better than I was expecting. That's fair. I like Shayna Baszler. Yeah, I like her. But, and there is a but there, I I don't know what it is about her. I mean, I, I do prefer Bianca Belair, and I was rooting for her to win. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to knock Shayna Baszler here, by the way. I do think no, she's no. good, but she's not my kind of professional wrestler. That's fair. Um, I like the flashier kind of professional wrestler who does the more of the, the 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 slams than the than the grab than the than the submissions. Um, I know that sounds incredibly shallow, and it doesn't mean to it doesn't mean to come across that way. But yeah, I just Bianca Belair is my preferred style of wrestling. That's fair. But I do think Shayna Baszler is incredibly talented, and she's taken to the sport very well. And considering you know her background is MMA. Yes, absolutely. Um, yeah, she's great. I think she's handling better than uh, Ronda Rousey does, personally. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, the thing is, that they're allowing Shayna <laughs> Baszler to grow into the sport. That's a good point, They've yeah. not thrown her straight into the deep end. Right, yeah, you're Ronda yeah. Rousey, you're going to headline WrestleMania. Yeah. It's like, okay, Shayna, uh, you're new to the sport. I mean, <laughs> you know, go and hone your craft, perfect it. You know, perfect that style, because that's going to be your style. Yes. Perfect that style, and then we'll push you. But with Ronda, it's like, okay, she's a big, she's a household name. Throw her straight in there and just be Ronda Rousey and throw people around and fake break people's arms and stuff. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, so, uh, Belair missed a fourth with the splash, which was countered by Baszler into the uh, submission move. And uh, Belair ended up dropping, so Baszler uh, retained her title, mm. um, which I get all predictions. Um, so, it's a point to me. Yay. Uh, but yeah, good match. I liked it. Yeah, it was good. Um, Bianca Belair is a real talent. Oh, yeah, she's great. Uh, she has it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay, obviously, there was a lot of people on the last batch of NXT tapings chanting overrated at her. Yeah. I don't see that to be the case at all. She is an incredible athlete yeah. and has a very bright future. Uh, I do think when Shayna Baszler's time to leave NXT and move on to the main roster uh, um, is done, I think Bianca Belair will be the one to step up and carry the NXT women's division going forward. Fair play. Uh, cool. So then, of course, we had the main event, which was uh, Tommaso Ciampa versus Alistair Black, mm. which, again, was amazing. It was awesome. Yeah, slow exactly. start. Yeah, a bit slow. But, but it picked up. you know, it, it built into something very special. Oh, yeah. I mean, the whole card, top to bottom, for NXT TakeOver is an insane show. Oh, yeah, seriously. Really, really good. And these are just two guys just doing what they do best. I mean, Alistair Black is main roster ready. Yeah, and easily. it wouldn't have made sense for them to put the belt on him now. Yeah, I agree with that for sure. He's definitely going to make roster sometimes soon. For sure. I mean, I can't see, I can't see what they do with Alistair Black now. Yeah, he's had 
great matches on takeovers throughout his time. He's been the NXT champion. Um, he, he doesn't need to do anything else. He is ready and you know more than capable of being on Raw or SmackDown. Yeah. And doing okay. really well, providing he's booked in the correct way. Which, to be honest, he's got the look, he's got the talent, and... I, he's got the entrance. That's very important yeah. on main oh, roster. Yeah. Yeah, he has really the is. entrance, yeah. and I think he's going to be. I think he's he's already a big star, but I just think his star is only going to get bigger. Oh yes, for sure. Um, so, um, uh, Trump was working on uh, Alistair's leg for most of the match. Uh, at the end of the match, uh, Black went for a for his black mask kick, which his leg gave out on him. Um, Trump counted with his fairy tale ending and won. So uh, Trump retains, which are both had predictions. Yep. And uh, so yeah, and Legends ends in a tie for for each. Cool, cool. Um, we know each other too well. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really, really good show. I loved it. Insane show. Uh, it was just another phenomenal show for NXT, and NXT really is the the the, the hottest. I know this is it's, you know it's what they say, but it's true. It is the hottest brand of sports entertainment in <laughs> at least in America. Yeah, at least. You know, it's 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 just crazy how good it is. Um, obviously, to close out the show, you had uh, Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa standing side by oh, yeah. side at the top of the ramp, awesome. both lifting their respective championship belts. Yes. Um, this is the the best wrestling story in years. Yeah, it's so good. So, so good. Find me a better one. <laughs> yeah, seriously. So, so, so well told. Yeah, yeah, I love it. And the best of it is, it's not done. It's still going. There oh, is yeah. still more to this. Much more. Can't and wait. I can't wait to see how <laughs> it unfolds. I mean, some people get annoyed with stories and the fact they drag on too long. But this is so well told uh, that people are happy to, you know, they, they were faces as DIY. Yeah. And now, seemingly, they are heels as DIY after going through a massive feud with one another. And it's just like, how does it end? Yeah, how seriously. is this... What what is the next chapter, you know, in the Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa feud in their, in their story? What is it? I mean, I I can't wait to find out. Yeah, it's yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Um, and yeah, that was that. So they made the Royal Rumble, of course. Um, we need to do Royal a school Rumble grade for uh, NXT Takeover Phoenix. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, well, just A. Yeah, A. A plus. A plus. Yeah, can we see much better than better than that? To be honest. No. Yeah. Probably not. It's all great. Great. Excellent, good stuff. Cool. Uh, yeah, so we're Rumble. Yep. Uh, we're Rumble on the pre-show started out a bit weird. We had a tag team match with, with uh, Bobby Roode and Chad Gable versus uh, Rizar from AOP and Scott Dawson from the Revival. Um, yeah, weird. Um, <laughs> so if Scott Dawson and Rizar won, both of, both the Revival and AOP would be entitled to a tag team title shot yeah. at some point. An unspecified <laughs> time. Yes. Which would have made sense if they'd have won, but they didn't. They lost. So, so it was what, incredibly pointless. What was the point? Yeah, <laughs> bizarre. It's like the last minute. Like, oh, we need one more match for the pre-show. Uh, just, just, these two, just put these guys together. Yeah, yeah. do that. Fine. If the show's <laughs> not long enough. It's already six and a half hours. We need to make it seven hours. Let's uh, let's just uh, Chad, Bobby, get your pants on. Let's uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's get you out there. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Have yeah. a really pointless match with a very bizarre twist. Yeah, it's so bizarre. So um, bizarre. So that was that. Neither of our predictions because we didn't know this was going to happen. Uh, yeah. So. Nobody did, and it shouldn't have happened, but it did. And there you go. There you go. Bizarre. Yep. Uh, so the first actual match, which actually mattered, uh, was uh, Shinsuke Nakamura versus Rusev for the United States Championship. And mm. uh, yeah, it was kind of slow, kind of quick, over quickly. Yeah. Um, I thought the match itself was actually okay. I don't think it was bad at all by any no, stretch. No, no, it's fine. Just, just didn't really have any weight to it like it didn't really mean anything um, no Nakamura did win to win the belt but which was I, surprising enough it was but it didn't really feel like it wasn't like mind blowingly oh my god he's a champion that's awesome it was more like oh okay I guess Nakamura's champion now yeah shrug <laughs> and I, I don't know I mean it, it felt very underwhelming yeah it was one of the better Nakamura matches on the main roster I would say hmm. Uh, but that isn't really saying a lot I don't think I mean we said this anyway but we didn't think Nakamura had a great has had a great time since coming to the main roster. Yeah, that's yeah, just shame. fact. Yeah. Um, so Nakamura won the championship, um, but more on that later. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll on that later for sure. Um, 
So we both that Rita to rinse and you would get a point there. Ding. Ding. Um, so uh, then we had the Fatal 4-Way Crudo match, which was uh, Buddy Murphy versus... I don't want to find the rest now. Oh yes, Buddy Murphy versus uh, Kalisto versus Akira Dozawa versus Hideo Itami, the aforementioned. Great match. Uh, really good match. Yeah, I liked it. Really good. Yeah. Put these guys on the main show. Yeah, seriously. Why are they not? Some people don't care and don't watch the pre-show. <laughs> yeah, seriously. But give these guys the opportunity to shine on the main show. Look at what happened at Survivor Series. Everybody was talking about the cruiserweights. Yep. You know, give the cruiserweights the chance to shine. Yeah. Put them if on you the show. want 205 Live it's... to be successful and still be a thing in a year's time, <laughs> then you need to give them exposure. Stop putting these great matches on the pre-show that nobody cares about. Yeah. This was a really, really great match. So good. I loved it. And just a massive shame that it was on the pre-show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Buddy Murphy won, retaining a championship, uh, which I had with predictions. Yay. Uh, that's the point to me. Uh, so, he had it on me. Yep, that um, went well, didn't it? Yeah, he has. I cursed him and now he's he, gone. He jinxed it, yeah. Mm. Uh, but it's a really, really good match. Uh, if you haven't seen it, uh, go watch it. Yeah, uh, if, you, if you did skip the pre-show, and I don't blame you because no, the Royal Rumble was super long, <laughs> yep. then definitely go check it out because it was good. Yeah, absolutely. And also, watch 205 Live. It's good. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we had the first match of the main show was the Women's uh, Championship match, SmackDown Women's Championship match, which was, of course, uh, Asuka versus Becky Lynch. The man. The man, Becky Lynch. Which feels weird saying it out loud. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but no, yeah, another good match. Becky Lynch and Asuka killed it, I thought. Yeah, good yeah. chemistry between the two. Yeah, really good. Loved it. No, I yeah, so did I. I thought it was really good. Sorry, I was. Yeah. Uh, I don't really have <laughs> much more to say about it other than I thought it was really good. Yeah, I mean, I <laughs> thought play. it was great. Great showing from the from the two of them. Yeah. Um, Becky Lynch right now is at a height of popularity that I never thought could happen. Oh yeah, seriously, she's uh, on fire right now. Oh, it, it's crazy. It really is crazy. Yeah. Which is awesome because it's super talented and Z deserves it. For sure. Um, so yeah, Asuka ended up um, being defeated. Nope. Retaining. Sorry, I can read. <laughs> I know words. Uh, Asuka ended up uh, retaining a championship against Becky, which is good because that shows Asuka's, you know, a worthy contender for a championship. Because before she's kind of like stuck in the background between like uh, Charlotte and Becky. It's mm. like Asuka champion, but Charlotte and Becky are like, the main focus. But having Asuka win here and you know, proving her dominance is uh, good. It shows that she deserves to be number one. Agreed. Um, I saw people talking down that victory by Asuka, saying that it damaged Becky. Becky is so popular right now that nothing her. could damage her. Yeah, seriously. Um, if Becky... I mean, Becky had to lose that match. Yeah, of course. It, because... Otherwise, it makes Oscar look rubbish. It makes it look—it makes it look terrible as a champion. Yeah. Because that was like her first proper title defense, I think. Oh uh, yeah, I think so. And if she'd have lost, maybe. that just damages that damages Oscar. A loss to Oscar would have been more damaging than the loss for Becky. Yeah. Because Becky can do no wrong at the minute, yeah, none exactly. at all. <laughs> and Oscar winning was the correct, uh, was definitely the correct decision. Um, that tap out didn't. Um, Every wrestling match is different. Yep. Just like every boxing match is different. Every football match is different. You know? Um, it's, it's just... like Okay, well, I'm going to use a football example here. Okay. Right? Man City lost yesterday. But Man City is still a great football team. They're still one of the best football teams in the world. So, yeah, they lost yesterday. But now they're still going to go on and wallop somebody at the weekend, probably. Probably, yeah. With, with, the, with, the, with the kicking of yeah. balls and stuff. Finn doesn't do sport. No. No. Um, so it's, it's it's the same kind of thing. I mean, obviously, football is real. Wrestling is predetermined. What do you mean? <laughs> oh, sorry, have I ruined that for you? Yeah, I mean, wrestling's real, obviously. It is, yeah, yeah but the, yeah, I, but I, it's I like ruin, so. Ruin I mean, it's just, it's just <laughs> it doesn't do damage to to Becky's reputation. No, I agree. That, yeah, this is the right decision for sure. So Becky will still be a favorite, just like Man City. Man City will still be a favorite. Totally, it's like when they kick the balls in the net. Yeah, and then everyone cheers. Yes, it's it's just it's a, it's a not a thing. I mean, people all they want to do is find negatives. Yeah, exactly. in everything. What well, with the internet? Yeah. yeah, the internet just want to find negatives with absolutely everything. Yeah, but Becky will still be the favorite going into WrestleMania, and Man City will still be a favorite in the Premier League. That's the point I'm trying to make. Here. It's <laughs> not damaging. Yeah, totally. Um, good. So that was that. And then we had. Sorry. We had uh, Shane McMahon and The Miz up against The Bar for the Tag Team Championship. Uh, and of course, Shane and Miz ended up winning, didn't they? Because Sonny had to bloody go and predict it like months ago. 
this would happen and he had to go and be bloody be right didn't he the bastard yep <laughs> I'm 100% correct yes um, and I need you to know and I'm gonna I'm gonna bang this drum forever <laughs> before they were even a tag team before so just after, it was the Smackdown after uh, Saudi Mania 2 when like they were showing off the, the trophy and the Miz walked down to the ring at that point when the Miz came out I said out loud they are going to win the tag team titles and they weren't even a tag team at that point <laughs> yeah to your yeah, to credit you're totally right you totally called it Shane McMahon should not be a champion of anything ever no I agree I, I, I'm <laughs> with you on that yeah, yeah. completely there's no way they should be the tag team champions and I hate when they throw tag teams together yeah. because this isn't going to last Sheamus and Cesaro I moaned about when it happened they <laughs> turned out for the good yeah, and I'm happy awesome. about that yeah. happy to be wrong but with this that's not gonna, it's not going to last they're yeah. obviously going to have a match against each other yeah that's probably going to be a Wrestlemania thing isn't it a WrestleMania yeah match. probably yeah Yeah. Miz can turn back heel please and uh, uh, yeah that could be a good thing yeah yeah to tell me who it really is the best in the world that's what it will be though mm. that's exactly <laughs> what it will be yeah, that's absolutely to determine be. who's the best in the world yeah. and who's going to carry that trophy around C. and C. the Miz Punk. will win see you Punk see you Punk sorry just uh, oh. predictions for uh, the inevitable chance at Wrestlemania yep <laughs> um, <laughs> right so we had of course um, Ronda Rousey versus uh, Sutter Banks for the mm. War Women's Championship and it was fine it was a good match I it thought it was okay yeah um, yeah, um, yeah. Come on, you're obviously <laughs> in for a reason. Uh, I mean, I'm not a, a, the biggest fan of Ronda Rousey as a wrestler. Um, I mean, she's not terrible by any means. No, but she's just you know not as good as other women like wrestler, IMO. Okay, and yeah. I agree with you. I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, because Ronda Rousey's there, that's why she's champion. Yeah. Because pretty much. Ronda Rousey is legitimate as a fighter. Yeah. Yeah. So how realistic is it for her to losing, to be losing <laughs> to Sasha Banks? Yeah, yeah, and that's not a knock against Sasha Banks. It's just a, it's it's a fact that Ronda Rousey is a household name and a legitimate fighter. If you have Ronda Rousey on your roster and she's the women's champion, people will talk about it. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the rumor is that she's off, and if Yay. she is, like I said last week, that's probably a good thing for the women's division. Probably. Because then it'd be way more competitive. Because at the minute, it obviously is not. Yeah. Um, but I thought the match itself was good. I thought Sasha gave a really good showing of herself. Yeah. And I think Sasha's a really great wrestler anyway. But she's not been doing much of anything recently, which is very disappointing. Yeah. Um, shame. But I thought it was a, I thought it was a good match. I thought it showed that Ronda can be pushed to her limits, and that will obviously gather more speed going into WrestleMania. Um, but yeah, I thought it was a. I thought it, I actually thought it was a good match. I thought it was probably better than uh, Oscar versus Becky. I don't know about that. Okay. I think I've heard, I've heard Oscar versus Becky personally. Um, I mean, it wasn't a bad match. It was fine. It was you know the beauty good. of opinions. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, it's absolutely fine. Um, but no, it's a fine match. Um, so of course, uh, one ended up winning, um, retaining the belt. Um, so yeah, that's point East to where the rest of the did that. Uh, also, the last match, um, I said the bar would win. Yeah. I just didn't want to see Shane winning, but you know, there you go. <laughs> so it went out with Tide. So yeah, three all. Cool. Um, so of course we had the women's um, Way Wumble match. Um, so yeah, I actually have the entire list of wrestlers in pair of two seconds. Really? You're going to go through the whole thing? Boy, am I? I'm not going to find it. Oh no, where's it going? I thought the Raw, the women's Raw Rumble match was okay. Yeah. Um, I'm glad it wasn't. Uh, oversaturated with legends because I don't think it needed to be. No, no. I think it was well padded out with the women superstars that they do have. And because last year it was new, people love seeing a legend. Last year I think there was maybe too many. Maybe. But this time um, there wasn't as many and it was better for it. Yes. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, first lady out, Lady Evans, brand new uh, signee. Mm hmm. Uh, let me call it Natalia. Followed by Mandy Rose, followed by Liv Morgan, followed by Mickey James, followed by Ember Moon, followed by <gasps> Biddy K, Nikki Cross, Page and Royce, Tamina, Zia Lee. Interesting. Zia Lee. Zia Lee, yeah, sorry. Um, which is cool. Um, Sarah Logan, Charlotte Flair, Kyrie Sane, nice. Uh, Maria Canales, sure. Um, sure. Na sure. Uh, Naomi, Candice LeRae. Good. Awesome. Uh, Alicia Fox, Case Casey Catanzaro. <laughs> she's really good yeah she was awesome uh, she's um, going to be um, a big talent she's the real life girlfriend of Ricochet yeah 
It's a very nice uh, backstage segment on WWE.com. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. really, really good. With me Ripley in the background too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's very funny. Um, but yeah, I thought uh, she, she... And she had probably the best Raw Rumble escape ever. Yeah. It, yes, it's amazing. Elimination so, escape. Yeah. Walking on her hands to the ring post, grabbing the ring post with her legs and then pulling herself up. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. If you've not seen her wrestle before, uh, she was in the Mayon Classic and her entrance to the ring, she would uh, climb up the ring post oh, yeah. and go over the ropes that way. Yeah. She was in American Ninja Warrior, so she's a complete athlete. Yeah. She awesome. won it. She won American Ninja Warrior. Yeah. Which is like yeah. Takeshi's Castle, but serious. <laughs> yeah, but American. Uh, yeah. It's... Then we had uh, Zelina, Zelina Vega, who was dressed as Vega from Street Fighter. Yeah, that was cool. That was I enjoyed cool. that. Nice. And uh, Ruby Wyatt, Dana Brooke, Io Shirai. Nice. Nice. Uh, Rhea Ripley. Very nice. Nice. Uh, Sonya Deville, Alexa Bliss, Bailey, And then Lana, except she was still injured from earlier when she got injured during uh, Rusev and Nakamura's match. Okay, well, there's no one to replace her, so we'll just move on. And yeah, so uh, there's not the 30 act, women uh, in the Royal Rumble. That's yeah, fine. Yeah. Uh, but no, she, of course, she was replaced by the man, Bigger Lynch. Yep which is awesome some sort of Irish shenanigans going on because <laughs> uh, she pretty much begged Fit Finley who obviously is the decision maker around there oh, of course, yeah. and he's like oh yeah alright just go in the Royal Rumble yeah why not yeah <laughs> and then Nia Jax and Carmella of course Becca Lynch ended up eliminating Charlotte Flair and Nia Jax to win the Rumble who will now go on to face um, a champion of her choosing who's going to be one of the really in it yeah <laughs> as you can find the war later um, so yeah good stuff you missed one in very, very important uh, bit of information there from the Women's Raw Rumble. Did I? Selena Vega spent most of the time hiding under the ring. Oh, uh, yeah. And it was actually really oh, funny yeah, and really well done. <laughs> yeah, And yeah. then Hornswoggle came out of <laughs> yeah. nowhere and chased her off. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that, actually, yeah. Uh, yeah, fair play. That's funny. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, cool. So, yeah, decent. Good old, good old horny. Good old horny. Horny Hornswoggle. Um, but, yeah, good match. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I mean, it, the, that's the correct outcome. Yeah, of course. Um, um, and it was the obvious outcome. Yep. yep. Uh, for you know, for the most part, I said that Becky and Charlotte would go over at the same time. Mm-hmm. And at one point, I did honestly think that was going to happen. But um, the like I said earlier on, the momentum of Becky is unstoppable right now. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Okay. And like anything she touches right now turns to gold. People wanted Becky. People got Becky. Uh, and none of those fans were thinking well she tapped out earlier on so <laughs> why why should she be in the war and well she tapped out clean she yeah, lost yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, no yeah really good let Becky won um, I think I had Charlotte to win and thinking Becky might get added to the match later and you had both to win so you got a point there um, but that's fine um, so we, do I get half a point nope so we have uh, <laughs> then we had of course uh, Daniel Bryan versus AJ Styles for the WWE Championship uh, which is again very good was it? yes I liked it uh, it was pretty boring in truth I mean it, it was, was okay <laughs> and it's not as good a match as they could have put on it in my been. opinion fair but I I did think it was pretty boring and slow and the crowd were dead the crowd actually were dead I think the rumble killed them a little bit uh, it didn't help they all um, cheered out from like just yeah. chanting Becky over and over and over <laughs> yeah yeah uh, but I thought it was fine it wasn't you know, it wasn't like the best they could do probably but um, no the, the worst matches mm. shrug I thought it was fine um so yeah, Jabari ended up wins, winning, of course, uh, with the help of uh, Eric Rowan, now known as Rowan. Uh, no more Eric. Rip. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know where this is going. I like I, it. I don't, but I, I like quite like it. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what this means for the Bludgeon Brothers. Obviously, they've killed that gimmick off now. That's not happening anymore. Yeah, yeah. I think they go there ways. I think Luke Harper will be fine when he comes back. Oh, I think Luke Harper will be absolutely fine. I think what they should do is separate them. Like, yeah. separate them properly. Have one on Raw, one on SmackDown. Because Makes sense. Like, when both of them are on the same show, WWE just give in and put them both together again. <laughs> yeah. I'd like, it happens so many times. I don't want to see it happen again because it's boring. That's fair. Like, at one point, like I went to a SmackDown uh, house show last year, maybe, or the year before. Can't remember. Either way. <laughs> but, um, like, Harper and Rowan fought each other. Oh, yeah. And I thought, this is all right. Then the next week, they turn up on SmackDown or whatever. Is there a tag team? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, f- yeah. come on. It's a bit weird. Yeah, I'm just sick of it. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, but yeah, good match. Um, I, I, I like I like where it's going. I like I like they're using uh, Rowan for something because Blood Brothers I don't think was really going anywhere. I don't think people were into it. Yeah, I don't think so. But uh, that's good. But but gives um, Brian something to hide behind. That like classic heel uh, tactic. I like it. It's good. Yeah, I mean I see Brian holding the championship for a while. Oh yeah, definitely. Don't Maybe know. Luke Harper could, Harper could come back Maybe. and challenge for the championship. Maybe I'd be okay. I'd be okay with that. 
Yeah, that'd be. I'd be okay with that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Awesome. Um, yeah. So then we had uh, Brock Lesnar versus Finn Balor for the War um, uh, Universal Title. That's yep. what it's called. And uh, it was good. It was better than AJ versus Brian. <laughs> True. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, Finn Balor um, did manage to get some offense in. Uh, looks like it might have injured Brock at one point. Into his stomach. So yeah, because the um, Brock went into the announce table. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's cool. I like this. Um, I thought this match was good. Um, the thing is, at the minute, what they're doing, obviously, is putting smaller guys against Brock, and he's just throwing them around. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I thought this was. I, th- I thought this was good. I thought Finn had a good showing. Yeah, very good. But um, the inevitable happened. Of course. Um, it did look a little, like at one point that Finn might actually pull off the victory, but of course. Uh, Brock Lesnar, few suplexes, F5, and he won. Mm. Boo. Yeah. But uh, Finn hit the coup de grace. Brock kicks out. F5 done. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Great. Yeah, typical Brock match, really, isn't it? Um, yeah, yeah. It was fine. It was okay. I mean, it's getting annoying, and I can't wait for it to end. <laughs> but I really can't wait for it to end. Yeah. Like, like Mania, I right. don't need to see Brock anymore after WrestleMania. Yeah. Just be done. Have yeah. that. That. That is. It needs to be over. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah, so that was that. Um, so we had the Men's Royal Rumble to win this off the night. And, um, yeah, it was good. It was good. Um, it was cool to see some of the NXT guys get in there. Yeah, very cool. Um, and I'm sure Finn is about to run you through the uh, the entrance now. I will, indeed, read the entrance right now. Here we are. Right, so if I start off, it was uh, Elias was number one. Mm-hmm. Um, he was there to sing to the ground. Yep. Um, but he was interrupted by none other than Jeff Jarrett. Yep. J E F J A R E T himself, and it's very funny. I liked it. Yeah, it was good. Enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, very cool. I like Jeff Jarrett. I've always sort of liked Jeff Jarrett in a weird way. Yeah, yeah. I liked him in WCW. I even had a slap nuts T-shirt. Nice. But yeah, I like Jeff Jarrett more than maybe some people do. But I, I actually quite like seeing him back in WWE. I, to be honest, the the fact that he can still throw an amazing punch is good enough for me and <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I I would be happy to see him wrestle a few matches if, if I'm being honest yeah why not have Elias versus um, Jeff Jarrett definitely all thing. over it yeah yeah that'd you know be I mean? great I'd really like that the guitar and the polymath or something I don't know no 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 that's, that's so WCW <laughs> it's, it's, it's the most ridiculous <laughs> thing fucking guitar on a pole match <laughs> uh, <laughs> with Judy Bagwell on a pole match the worst of it is when I was watching Raw I was thinking the exact same thing <laughs> yeah, I was thinking yeah. this is going to end up being some sort of weird guitar Hitting match <laughs> probably, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, this is when the Lord, Lord segment. Uh, the Lord ends up in, ends up eliminating Jeff Jarrett after smashing with a guitar. Yeah, it's cool. I liked it. I don't need Jeff Jarrett to wear that old attire. Just wear the shorts. That's yeah. fine. Yeah, that's fine. You're still in some sort of decent shape. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number three was uh, Nakamura. Uh, we had Kurt Angle. Good to see him back. Uh, Big E, Johnny Gargano. Nice. Nice. Uh, Jinder Mahal, Samoa Joe, Kurt Hawkins. Uh, who actually eliminated Titus O'Neil nice yes good uh, Seth freaking Mullins with number 10 then uh, Titus O'Neil there he is uh, number 12 Cooper Kingston Mustafa Ali um, Dean Ambrose no wait Jose no wait Jose got eliminated like a second I'm um, pretty <laughs> certain that spot has been done before pretty much where yeah. like um, was it when Adam Rose was in WWE that's exactly what it was yeah I was trying to think of it yeah and like he I came down with the Royal. Rosebuds went in the Royal Rumble got thrown out and then they Parted all the way back to the entrance, all in one sort of go. Yeah, history repeats itself, I guess. <laughs> um, Vince must love that. Yeah, seriously. Hey, you know what's funny? <laughs> no. <That's>, yeah. <laughs> Send no way, Jose. I can't even do <laughs> the fucking voice. Oh man. Oh uh, god. Uh, so we had uh, Drew McIntyre, followed by Xavier Woods, uh, Pete Dunne. Nice. Awesome. Nice. Good team there. Great to see Pete Dunne in the uh, in the Royal Rumble. We yes. called it. We did say being there, didn't we? Oh yeah. Uh, but it was great to see him in there, and um, I saw a really interesting tweet. From Pete Dunne saying like he once wrestled in a field in England oh, yeah, in front that. of two people, yeah. and then he was in front of forty eight thousand at the Royal Rumble. So uh, nice. it's awesome that he's he's come that far, and he deserves it. He's oh yeah, I mean he's the longest reigning champion in WWE. Yeah, and he's just awesome. He's going from strength to strength. He's so good. I love him. Uh, then we had uh, Andrade, Andrade, yeah, yeah, that guy. Yeah, uh, that guy. He used to have more names, but yeah, they've they've been banished. Yeah, seriously. Um, and we had uh, Apollo Cruz, Alistair Black, nice. Nice. Uh, returning Shelton Benjamin. Nice. Yeah, I don't really. Uh, I didn't really understand what his trousers were about. Um, I don't remember them. What were they? I don't know. They were just like <laughs> trousers. Oh, 
Okay. He used to wear shorts, doesn't he? I, I think so, if I'm right. It was a weird inclusion in the War Rumble <laughs> for me, Shelton Benjamin, because <laughs> I like Shelton Benjamin, and I've you know I really am rooting for Shelton to because he's way more talented than how he's being booked. Yeah, I true. Mean, to be honest, you could probably say that about a lot of people, but Very true. like they made a big deal about Shelton Benjamin coming back before he was coming back. Yeah, yeah, and then and yeah, then did nothing with him. Weird. They wanted to remake the world's greatest tag team with Chad Gable. Didn't work. <laughs> Didn't work. Nope. They tried. <laughs> but Shelton had a good showing, I thought. He did. It's all right. Uh, we had uh, Baron Corbin, uh, Jeff Hardy, Rey Mysterio, Bobby Lashley, Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, Randy Orton, and then our truth accepts a nope because he was attacked from behind by Nia Jax? Question mark. Interesting. And then Nia Jax walked down to the ring and entered the Rumble by herself. Yep. Sure. Okay. Sure, that's allowed. And then el- eliminated Mr. Ali. Bali. Ugh. We'll never that, live that down. Uh, but then, uh, so yeah, Nigel was there, wanted to be part of the match, and he ate an RKO and a kick to the face, and a 619, and then got thrown over the rope by I think Randy Orton, Rey Mysterio, and someone else. Dolph Ziggler. Okay, let's talk <laughs> about this. Okay. Intergender wrestling. Sure. What do you think to it? I'm okay with it. Well, I'm okay with it as well. Yeah, as long as you know. Both as long as it's tasteful and it's, it's competitive. Yeah, yeah. Like, because there's, you know, men are. are are equal to, women are equal to men yeah of course and I'm all for intergender wrestling yeah I bought it um, yeah I mean I saw people on the internet oh god did, it re- did, 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 did three blokes really need to beat her up um, she attacked them first yeah she just beat the crap out of them <laughs> she beat the crap out of them and then threw one of them over the top rope yeah yeah um, she <laughs> had it coming yeah seriously and it was done in a way where the crowd weren't sort of ooh, are we supposed to cheer this or whatever uh, this happens all over the world now there's intergender matches all over the world just because and this is another reason why WWE is obviously the biggest company in the world the spotlight is there and oh yes. these people that were like WWE are really disappointed as you really disappointed us open your fucking eyes because <laughs> there, this is happening everywhere yeah seriously uh, yeah let everyone in is it's happening it's like yeah. <laughs> so I'm why completely fine with, with it yeah yeah makes absolutely map Perfect chance. And I'm happy that WWE are pulling the trigger on this. If yeah. they actually, if this is what is actually happening, yeah, it certainly seems to be that way. Good like it, doesn't it? Yeah. But and I'm fine with it. Yeah, me too. Absolutely fine with it. It's all good. Um, so we're in a match. Um, one has got himself ended at number ten. Uh, we got attacked by uh, Bobby Lashley and put through a table. Mm. We now stable. See who's kind of on the outside. Uh, not eliminated for a little while. Mm-hmm. And then towards the end of the match, he came back, uh, eliminated the last few guys, and uh, ended up winning the whole thing. Yep. So uh, Zeph Rollins wins uh, the men's Royal Rumble 2019. Yep. Very good stuff. I like good. it. Good. Yep. Which I predicted. Which means I get an extra point. Which means I win. Yay. Yay. Finn wins. Predictions. Congratulations, boop, Finn. Boop. Yep. So so far it is one all for predictions. Nice. Total. nice. Uh, so I had um, Braun Strowman to win the Royal Rumble. You did. It's a smart choice. To be fair. Yeah. But I just don't get what Braun does now. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, do you think he's damaged? Do you think that's would it be fair to say? Um, maybe, maybe. I think maybe the plan, the original plan, was to be like Brock versus Braun at WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. But I know what happened. Like there might have been an injury happened, and then we kind of sailed on him a little bit, or I don't know. Who knows? I read there was some Something backstage happened. problems. Oh really? But I don't know. Mm. He still featured prominently every week, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I just don't get it. Just yeah, there maybe. has to be a reason. Yeah, but it's yeah. just a reason that we just don't know. <laughs> About this, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll have something to do with WrestleMania. Maybe a shift to SmackDown in the new year. Uh, I keep saying in the new year. What <laughs> I mean by that is like, WWE is doing seasons. Pretty much, yeah. When Once WrestleMania's done, then you start again and you have the superstar shake-up. Maybe move to SmackDown is what benefits him. Yeah. I don't know. Um, although, based on that, does contradict what I said last week, where you could have the smaller guys on SmackDown. I don't oh, know. Yeah, I, don't, we don't, I mean, things are changing constantly within WWE at the minute. Oh, yes, definitely. Um, so, yeah, what do you give Boy Rumble overall? It's a cool grade. I thought it was okay. B. Yeah, I'd say, say yeah, I'd give it a solid, solid B plus, I'd say. Yeah. I, I thought it was okay. Yeah. Move improvement, but good. Yeah, it uh, wasn't terrible. Yeah. You it's, can see that, they, <laughs> that they're going somewhere, that the main roster is getting better. Yeah. Um. It's just, the, again, these things do take time, but you can see that it is getting better. Um, there's certain people that, you know, you struggle to see where the direction is. But hopefully, as we do build towards WrestleMania, and we do still have two pay-per-views in between, we've still got the Elimination Chamber, and we've still mm-hmm. got Fast Lane. Um, so there's a lot of time to build. Um, I'm sort of leaning towards now seeing major changes 
after WrestleMania because I'm assuming that the WrestleMania plans were already in place. Fair play. Um, yeah, I'm good with that. Hmm. Good stuff. So, what happened? What's back down? Um, so yeah, what started with Seth coming out saying, "I won the Rumble." Point to sign. About who do I pick? Braun Strowman. Braun? Why do I write Braun there? I mean Brock. <laughs> Brock or Brian? I don't know why I wrote Braun. Sorry. Um, no, you're not. No, I'm not. Who do I pick? Um, Brock or Brian? I'll think about it and let you know. Then Triple H comes down and says, actually, uh, you need to pick. That sounds more Vince, isn't it? You need to pick more. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> you need to pick one of the other nights. Both guys will be here. We have to pay Brock a fuck ton of money to be here, so you better pick or else. Um, so then Dean Ambrose comes down and says, hey, let's fight right now. Just cause. Okay. And then match happens. <laughs> uh, Dean Ambrose was really great in this segment, by the way. Yeah, it was cool. Um, this does lead me to believe that Dean and Triple H are going to fight at some point. Yeah, sure. Because I don't think they've got Batista for WrestleMania. Yeah, and I think Triple H is going to be fit enough for WrestleMania. Yeah, because Batista, Batista was heavily rumoured to be in the Rumble, wasn't he? And yet he wasn't there. So maybe they just couldn't get him, or I don't know. I mean, Batista is very busy. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. He has movies. Doing movies and stuff. I mean, he's a big star now. Yeah, yeah. Um, like The Rock and even John Cena they probably don't need to be involved yeah yeah um, so I don't think they've got Batista for Wrestlemania at least that's what I've read yeah. but um, Dean Ambrose versus Triple H would be fine yeah, if they can tell that. a good enough story between now and then yeah absolutely which I'm sure they can yeah totally uh, just let Dean have a match um, it's been a good match by the pair yep. I liked it good back and forth uh, Ambrose comes close to winning a few times but uh, Seth wins with a dirty D uh, stomp cheers Michael uh, did yeah. you hear that? Michael Gold started called Dodies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Don't do you stomp? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Seth wins, which is the right decision. Dean uh, sold it like a boss as well. Yeah, he did, yeah. It's it like cool. Shawn Michaels selling Hulk Hogan's big boot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, well, not, not quite that bad. But, yeah. No. <laughs> that was good. Uh, so, after the break, Dean Ambrose stood in the ring, sitting on a steel chair, mm. with a microphone in hand, uh, about to say them to the audience, but was interrupted by Nia Jax. Okay, sure. Uh, so I hope that Tamino are coming down to the ring ready for the, for the next uh, match, the tag team match. Um, get in Dean's face and then end up knocking him out of the ring. Um, that's weird. I enjoyed the whole segment. Yeah, I liked it, yeah. Um, I enjoyed the, uh, the the Triple H, Dean, Seth conversation. Uh, I enjoyed the match. I thought that was good. And I liked... Because I'm intrigued to see where this Nia Jax thing is going. Because, if I mean, if they're going to have intergender matches... Uh, great I'm fine with that but I'm just interested to see where it all goes I like the the sort of face off between Nia Jax and Dean Ambrose yeah interesting uh, I am now just intrigued as to where it goes yeah seriously intriguing for sure uh, so yeah so we had that match uh, it's Alexa Bliss and Mickey James versus Nia Jax and Tamina the winners qualify for the Elimination Chamber match uh, for the title match and it was fine Tamina sure, yeah. Tamina's, Tamina's still sucks sorry but yeah I'm not a big garbage. fan of Tamina I mean <laughs> I just I don't. I just don't get why she's still got a job. Yeah, it's. I weird. guess this tag team thing is keeping her going. I, I suppose. I guess so. Uh, so yeah, and Nia ends up ends up winning the match with a double Simone drop to both uh, Mickey and Alexa. Nice. Nia's very strong. She's strong. Um, yeah, and that was that. So they qualify. They're going to be in the Elimination Chamber uh, for the tag team titles. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. Cool. I'm looking forward to that. To be honest, I think that's going to be really good. Yeah. Yeah. Me mm. too. And so we have um, kind of. A Kind of a weird match. Uh, Baron Corbin versus Kurt Angle. Sort of a blow off to this whole feud. Yeah. Um, it's happening on Monday Night War. Okay. Um, and it was fine, but it was very slow and very you know, short. I think Kurt Angle might be done after this, to be honest. I don't think we're going to see him again after this. Ever? I mean, maybe like in a managerial role somewhere down the line. But uh, Dave, I don't know. I mean, it didn't look great for him. For somebody who is such a legend, yeah. the booking of him from a wrestling perspective has been very strange. Yeah. Thrown out the Royal Rumble and nothing was made of it. Uh, he's lost clean on Raw in pretty much every match that he's had. Yeah. And I, it's a real shame, to be honest. I don't really like it. I don't like the way that they've, they have they have gone about the booking of Kurt Angle. Um, I just... Sometimes you just have to leave it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, if you're going to have Kurt Angle wrestle, at least have him... Because he's still in good shape. As yeah. from a body from a body perspective, you know, I know you know he can't move around like he used to, so he's not going to be running up the ropes and doing belly to belly suplexes or whatever yeah, yeah. Uh, off the ropes and stuff like that, or insane moonsaults. But you know, he, 
I don't know. I'm just. I'm not really that happy with the way that he's been booked since he's been back. Yeah, it's a weird one. Um, so yeah, of course, Baron Corbin ends up winning with the all things deep six. This is kind of fine, I guess. Uh, he was locked in ankle lock, but reverses it, hits his spinning deep six thingy, and wins. Out, That's another thing. The ankle lock kind of used win. to be an unbeatable finisher. Yeah, yeah. And it was just by Baron Corbin couldn't get to the ropes, so he turned around and kicked him like it weren't shit. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. And then after the match, he hits you at the end of the days. And that was just kind of it. And that was it. Yeah, so. I mean, I don't. I, <laughs> if that's the way that Kurt Angle's going to be booked as a wrestler, I don't need to see Kurt Angle wrestle. Yeah, seriously. I'd rather so, remember the, the the glory days of Kurt Angle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, weird one. So then we had uh, Zack Ryder, who was, had his name spelt wrong on the on the uh, Good. Yeah, really spot. good attention to detail by WWE, yep. especially when his name was spelt correctly on his Twitter handle, <laughs> directly <laughs> underneath the incorrect spelling of his first name. Yeah. Really good. Bizarre. Uh, so, yeah, Zach White and Hawkins versus The Revival. Um, White and Hawkins were on top for a little while, but then um, they weren't, and then they lost. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's uh, just literally as simple as that. Pretty much. Um, I do still see Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder winning the tag team titles. Oh, yeah, definitely. It'll happen. Um, and that will be Kurt Hawkins' first win. Yeah. And you heard it here first. Yep. But um, <laughs> I don't think it was a bad showing for them. No, no, it was good. It's cool little. But cool you need moment. to build up that um, that win. You need to build up that first win. Like just give it like, oh, la- this is the, this is the last chance we're gonna have. And if you know if we can't win the tag team titles, we'll forget it. Yeah. We'll ride off into the sunset. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um. Mm-hmm. And then out of nowhere they win. It's like, oh my god, we won the tag team. Yeah, even if yeah. they have the tag team titles for not very long, yeah. they could be a really good tag team. Like the footage they showed of them, <laughs> yeah, like definitely. as a young, you know, younger guys being a tag team and the tag team moves that they were doing, I was like, okay, well I'm happy for this. Yeah. Let's, let's let's build these guys up as a tag team. Yeah, why not? Once that winning streak thing is, well, the losing streak <laughs> thing is gone, then I think you can start building them properly as a tag team, and I do think that's what will happen. Yes, I agree. I'm fine with it as well. Yeah, completely fine with it. Totally fine with it. That's awesome. Uh, give it back to the world engine music because it was awesome. Uh, right. <laughs> do you remember the do you remember, do you remember the old engine music? Who's? Jack uh, White Hawkins. It was awesome. No, I don't remember it at all. It was awesome. Go into it after. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was great. So we had uh, Elias in the ring again, mm-hmm. and he turns fully turned heel this time. Hooray! He Elias. That's how we like him. Yeah, but he's, like, he's been a face for about five minutes. <laughs> True. I like Elias. Look, I'm wearing a t-shirt right now. Uh, yeah, I always liked Elias better as a heel. I mean, back in the NXT, he was, he was awesome, I thought. The thing is, people are still going to cheer him. Probably. Because he's got the catchphrases. <laughs> yeah. And people love a catchphrase. Ones. Yeah, exactly. And he's a cool heel. He is. Uh, I love this segment, by the way. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. Uh, he's saying how he no longer plays songs for us, he plays songs for himself. He prefers to play with himself. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but then he was interrupted by Jeff Jarrett, again. Yep. Uh, oh, listen up, slap nuts. Nice. Loved it. Loved it. I absolutely. <laughs> to be honest, uh, I geeked out for it a little bit, and I was chanting along with the J E double F J A double R E double T, and uh, absolutely loved it. Yeah. I wish he would have his other music though, not the like because he's coming down to the double J music. Oh yeah. Like circa ninety eight. Sure. Um, like when he was sort of like ninety seven, ninety eight, Jeff Jarrett, and then like when he came back after. Here we go, some uh, wrestling knowledge for you. So when he lost the um, the match at SummerSlam to X Park, where um, it was like hair versus hair, and Jeff Jarrett lost and came and like had his hair cut, and that's the Jeff Jarrett that we see now. When he came back, um, you know, he started wearing, stopped wearing the uh, like the thing that he wore at the Raw Rumble, and started wearing shorts and had the short hair, and he had better music. And I wish he would have that music. Fair play. All of that story just for that. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll take a breath for it. Uh-huh. So then uh, Jeff Jarrett was interrupted by Road Dogg, what people. Yeah, yeah, and I love that as well. That's very funny. And once again, geeking out. I was there <laughs> chanting along with the uh, the Road Dogg stuff. Yeah. Uh, does, so yeah, he does his usual stuff, which is awesome. He does that. I've got two words for you. So good. Which awesome. is still crazy over. Because it's still... Awesome when the fans were chanting holy shit, and he was like, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. This is a family show. You can't do that. <laughs> I made it worse, didn't I? I yeah. made it worse. Yeah, whoops. <laughs> Fair play. I, lo- I used to love Road Dogg. Yeah. One of the best, like, stick men in wrestling yeah seriously so, and he's still got it as well oh yeah he's so good it. that like even so I just I wish he'd have done the tag team champions of the world like oh, yeah. <laughs> I used to love that but um, it's, it's fine he, 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 he still he still has it oh yeah absolutely um, then they both sing uh, With My Baby Tonight 
which uh, Road Dog forgets the words to. I also geeked out for that, and I yeah. knew the words probably better than Road Dog, which yeah. I'm not sure is a good thing. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so he dances, dances dance with Renee. It's all Dean, Dean's very jealous in the back. Yeah, and Renee can't dance. <laughs> yeah. Um, I bet, I bet my, my girlfriend was like looking at me yes. like, what? So he's <laughs> yeah, chanting bet. along to these like old dudes, like, and now he's singing doing? this yeah. weird song that they're <laughs> singing on wrestling. It's weird. <laughs> wrestling is weird. But that's, that's, that's wrestling is weird. Yeah, it is. You're right. <laughs> it is weird. But yeah, that's what makes it awesome. So yeah, yeah, wrestling is also good. awesome. Yeah. Uh, so then uh, Elias, Elias gets sick of it and attacks uh, Jeff Jarrett with a guitar. Uh, Jarrett fights back, uh, but then they all, but ended up Elias ended up standing at all. He attacks uh, Road Dog and. Uh, Jeff Jarrett and that was the end of that segment uh, I firmly believe that this is going to end with a Jeff Jarrett versus uh, Elias match oh yeah for sure. Jeff Jarrett has just recently signed a deal with WWE oh yeah um, to my knowledge he's going to be a producer oh nice and um, he is going to the contract he signed and this is what I've read obviously I'm not the one dealing with the contracts directly of course yeah. um, oh you not oh no I, I did <laughs> book Shane McMahon and the Miz to win the oh, tag yeah, team title yeah, so yeah. Um, well, the contract he signed <laughs> is to be uh, on-screen personality stroke backstage role producer um, so we, I do expect Jeff Jarrett and Elias to have a match culminating in this interesting guitar feud yeah obviously that'd be cool um, yeah so we had a little backstage segment um, so for the tag team uh, women's tag team thing uh, originally Ember Moon was going to be Natalia's partner but she was replaced but she's hurt so she was replaced by uh, Dana Brooke Ooh, poor Natalia <laughs> yeah. As soon as I saw it, I was like, "Yeah, they ain't winning." Yeah, yeah. Then that little backstage segment was like, um, "Dana Brooke was like, uh, I'm just as good as Amber, don't you think?" <laughs> no. no, no one thinks that. No. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that was that. More Natalia. I thought that'd be great. Um, after that, we, <laughs> so after that, we had a little uh, segment with Mojo Wally in the back, in the dark, talking to himself in the mirror. Enjoyed this. Yeah, Moody Mojo. Hmm. Listening to uh, My Chemical Romance in the background. Uh, what? Or should have been. Um, was he? No. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, I thought, I'm sure there was silence. <laughs> it was, yeah, it. I liked it, to be honest. I don't like Mojo. Well, in fact, let me rephrase that. I don't like that dickhead hype character. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. rubbish and it's annoying. That's right, yeah. Garbage. Uh, but if, I mean, Mojo is, you know, he has all of the tools to be, you know, a, he, I mean, he looks the part. He's a big oh, yeah. guy, you know? Yeah, huge. Um, I don't want to see the hype thing. I don't want to see him running around the ring. I want to see him uh, as a moody heel um, destroying people. That's what I want to see from Mojo. And uh, I liked this segment that he was talking to himself in the mirror and he delivered it really well. Uh, I thought he came across really, really good. And um, providing they change his music and <laughs> the way that he acts like in in and out of the ring, uh, then I can I think I can get behind Mojo as an in ring competitor now. Yeah, I'm intrigued for sure. She, she yeah, I am definitely. Yeah. Yes, yeah, interesting. Uh, so we have the match of Natalia and Dana Brooke versus Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan. Bet you can't guess who wins. Dana Brooke and Natalia, congratulations, you are in the Elimination Chamber match. Yep. Probably going to win the tag team titles. Oh yeah, absolutely, that's definitely going to happen. Except yeah. nope, because Liv Morgan wins with, a wall, with nothing wall up to Natalia after, da- after Dana fucks it up. So, yeah, <laughs> let's live, live, and, uh, live and Sarah Logan into the Elimination Chamber match. It's just nothing match. Like, yeah, it's like stupid. Nothing. Done. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so we have uh, Wanda Rousey in the ring uh, cutting a promo it's, it's not great uh, uh, she is getting crucified in there a little bit yeah uh, every cr- time she says something I mean you could tell she was <laughs> flustered oh, yeah. and she you know she she stammered and she alluded to it as well but um, yeah she, she I think she found it difficult I think she's finding the uh, she's finding out what wrestling fans are really like <laughs> yes loud and obnoxious yes yes words um, so yeah the crowd obviously want Becky and uh, yeah but then they were interrupted by uh, Bailey, who challenges Wanda to a uh, impromptu title match mm-hmm. nice I mean I, I assume they sent Bailey out too early because I think Ronda Rousey was they, they advertised it as the Ronda Rousey open challenge and Ronda Rousey didn't even say those words uh, yeah I yeah, don't I think, think she got there I think they'd probably uh, that segment had overran because of the crowd mm. booing and interrupting Ronda and whatnot. Um, so I think that, that, that kind of balls things up a little bit. So they sent Bailey out early, and Bailey said, "How about we fight right now?" And to be fair, if, to Bailey, she actually did her promo very well. Yeah, fair play. Um, it is a decent match. Yeah, it was um, long as well. Jesus. Yeah, Bailey, Bailey looked good. It's like about um, five ad breaks. Yeah, yeah, seriously. Um, yeah, Bailey got a bunch of weapons, which is good. Um, there's nice at one point. There's a nice kick, which reversed into like a knee bar. It's a lot. Knee bar. Knee bar. Good stuff. <laughs> um, 
yeah, just very cool. Um, Bailey was on top for most of the match until a top rope um, move of some description got reversed into an armbar, and Bailey is forced to tap. Well, I think what it was supposed to be was, you know, like when people do the reversal into the armbar, oh, yeah. like they they flip and. You know what I mean, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I think they were supposed to be that, but yeah. it, like they flopped off the ropes. Yeah, that's right. It looked, it looked fine. Yeah, it still looked fine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so one well, object win- ends up winning with a armbar. Uh, armbar. Armbar. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's fine. Decent match. I liked it. Yeah, it was good. Good stuff. Uh, the handshake, handshake after the match as well, which is nice. Yep. Sportsmanship. Of course. <laughs> and then uh, Becky Lynch came down. Of course. Who? Uh, Becky Lynch. The man. I don't know who that is. Uh, some, some, Never some, heard of her. Some, some ginger. Oh, some ginger. <laughs> <laughs> um, two, as well, I what I can only compare to a Stone Cold Steve Austin type reaction. Oh, yeah. The crowd explodes. Honestly, it? when her music hit, like, you know, when when the when the glass shattered for Austin <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. like, the crowd would stand up and, like, put their arms in the air? Yeah. That's what it was like when Becky's music hit. It's pretty the big. People went ballistic. Yeah, yeah. It was insane. It's unbelievable. Honestly, Becky is just... This Another level of popular right now. It's serious, yeah, she's awesome. Um, so yeah, she challenges Wanda uh, for WrestleMania. Uh, obviously, didn't see that happening. No, obviously not. Didn't no, know. no, I thought she was going to fight Oscar again. Yeah, she had like a little face-off. Uh, Wanda says how she was like made the name of herself in UFC while you were training in for to be a wrestler in WWE. I was kicking ass and this and that. Um, she said she's like I can kill kill you with my bare hands if I want to do. Yeah, oh, I wait. thought that was interesting actually. Yeah, I thought. Sure, I love. Calm down, Jesus. Yeah, it's, anyway. <laughs> all, all she wants is a match for your title at WrestleMania. Do you yeah. don't want to get bludgeoned by yeah. you in the ring? <laughs> uh, yeah. I thought Ronda did okay though. Yeah, I did think, right, actually, yeah. Angry Ronda d- does give a great promo. Yes, Angry th- Ronda is best Ronda. I thought Becky was great in this exchange. Well, I, d- I really like the exchange. I do not want this to be made into a triple threat match. No, no, sorry, we ruined it. Do not want. No, nope. no, thank you. Just let us have Ronda versus Becky. Charlotte, go fight Oscar if you really have to. Yeah. You can build that as Charlotte versus Oscar 2 or whatever. Yeah, why not? Um, yeah, that'd be fine. Uh, so we had uh, Braun Strowman versus McIntyre. Uh, again, what's fine? Cool, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Braun's on top. Uh, he was about to attack McIntyre with the steps, but then stopped by Baron Corbin. Because um, they're still a thing. Mm. Uh, which is fine. It's going to be feuding for a little while longer, I think, Braun and uh, Baron. Sure, great. McIntyre, probably. Uh, Ball gets the other hand for him briefly, uh, but then ends up getting stopped by a claymore kick from McIntyre, and then they both slam Braun onto the steps. Ouch. Uh, so yeah, this feud continues. It's fine. Just yeah, just yeah. Yeah, that's it. I, I, <laughs> I don't really have an opinion on it. I yeah. don't care. No, it's fine. It's fine. I like all three guys. I oh, yeah. do. Of course. But this feud is just not great. No. It's been going on, it's been going on too long. It, it, it needs fresh. It does feel it. like it has been going on a while. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah, so that was that. So we had the uh, final little segment, which was uh, Brock uh, and Paul down the ring. Just going to ignore the um, Bobby Lashley and Finn Balor segment? Apparently so. I didn't want you to notice about it. Good. It might have been left off my recording. Okay, um, <laughs> so... Um, Weird. Finn Balor came down and talked about uh, his, his match with Brock Lesnar the night before. Then Leo Rush and Bobby Lashley came down and basically said that Bobby Lashley is ten times is, is better than Brock Lesnar and uh, I know, actually, yeah. that um, <laughs> Finn Balor would stand no chance at all in beating Bobby Lashley and I know exactly where this is going and Finn's going to win the IC title but Bobby Lashley uh, did like four or, like three or four massive spine busters to Finn Balor. Yes, I do remember that. I don't know why he won't make notice that. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, that was the thing. That's going to be definitely going to be a few going forward. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Sure. And that's fine because I think it will end up in Finn Balor winning the IC title. Oh, yeah. And definitely. he can make that champion. I mean, they've bounced that title around a little bit and I'm sort of fine if Finn Balor's going to carry it and make it feel a bit more important. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'll be okay with that, for yeah. sure. Uh, so then we had Brock and Paul <laughs> come down to the ring. Um, so, yeah, Paul was saying, like, this should be Seth's, easy to do with Seth's life. Why do you want to go up against Brock Lesnar when he can go up against Stan Bryan? Fair point. <laughs> yeah, it's a fair point. It is. Uh, Seth comes down, gets in Lesnar's face, and then punches him in the face. Nice. I like it. Uh, kicks, him in the, kicks him in his stomach, which was injured last night at the Rumble. Uh, good selling. Very good selling. Uh, goes for a stomp, but then gets picked up into an F5, followed by four more F5s, and then another F5. <laughs> Many more F5s later, and Brock is left standing at all. Yep. Uh, so yeah, this is obviously going to be uh, Seth versus Brock at WrestleMania, isn't it? They've announced it that it is. Have they? Oh, yeah, Seth didn't even say. <laughs> yeah. 
What's weird is Daniel Bryan was at Raw. Yeah, but they used like the one. I think it was like one backstage segment. Yeah, but it was like a was couple it. of backstage bits with Daniel Bryan. Yeah. And then he wasn't even in the final segment. Yeah. Weird. Which I thought would have been cool for him to be in there with all of them. It would have been, but oh well. <laughs> That's that. And uh, yeah, that was Raw. Sure. It's fine. It was okay. Yeah. 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 It's not, it wasn't a bad show at all. I mean, yeah, it's, no. it's forwarding things on. Oh yeah. For sure. And at this time of year, when you're pushing towards WrestleMania. Um, that's just how things are going to be. I mean, like I said, we have got two more pay per views, but yep. I think the, the the main thing that they wanted to establish the night after Raw Rumble was what was coming at WrestleMania. Yeah, pretty much. Cool. It's even longer episode. Jesus. Right, let's carry on. How long is it? <laughs> uh, about an hour twenty so far. Okay, we're not going to be much longer. We promise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so SmackDown happened, and it was good. Uh, ish. Not much wrestling, but it was fine. Uh, so Becky Lynch came down. He says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat up the, the one that Rousey had the, the wrestling of the Manias. <laughs> and then Charlotte comes down and it's like, I'm still here. I'm, I'm important. Right, guys? Remember me? Remember I was going to fight one of Rousey? That was, that was cool, right, guys? Mm-hmm. Guys? Right? Yeah. Uh, so he gets up in uh, Becky's face and gets punched in the face again. Nice Which, stiff shot as well. Yeah, nice stiff shot. Very nice. I like it. Uh, a fight in shoes. And then uh, Jamie Noble comes down to save the day, as always. Yep. Good old Noble. Former <laughs> J&J security member. <laughs> yep. Former Cruiserweight champion. <laughs> Good old Jamie Noble. <laughs> yeah, former husband of uh, Nidia. Nidia, that was her name. I was trying to think of her name earlier. I couldn't think of it. Nice. <laughs> uh, she has to think. That forwards on that feud. I, I, yeah, as you say, I don't want Charlotte to be Attitude's match. No, I don't. Like, Not at, first, at all. At first, I was like, okay, yeah, sure, but that match would be cool. But now, I've seen Becky Lynch explode in popularity. I'm like, actually, no, just have Becky Lynch and yeah. Rousey. Yeah, much better. Yeah, the only reason I... I can, The only thing I can see with Charlotte being added is that they don't want Ronda Rousey to lose. Yeah, yeah. So that if if, Char- if Becky's going to win the women's championship, she beats Charlotte and not Ronda. Mm, yeah. Uh, but otherwise, it makes no sense to add Charlotte. I mean, I know that there's, you know, they've had that storyline, but right now the fans don't want to see Charlotte in there. I think yeah. the fans will boo it out the, the boo that bit out the building. Yeah, seriously. If Charlotte is added to the match. Agreed. So hopefully they, uh, yeah, hopefully they don't, they don't uh, ruin that. Yes. Did you say words then? No. I speak in Finnish. You sounded like you were like been, had been like rewound. I was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was that. Um, so we had an uh, interesting match: <laughs> uh, R-Truth versus Nak- Nakamura, which is a US title match mm-hmm. uh, because uh, obviously R-Truth R- R- got uh, screwed out the Rumble because he was attacked by Nia Jax. Uh, he said he was going to win the Royal Rumble. Yeah, of course. But he was. Well, why would he not have? Of yeah, course, of course he would yeah. have. Yeah, he number thirty. Yeah, R-Truth versus um, Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Yeah, of course. Match of the match of, yeah, millennium. Definitely. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so matches match is ongoing. Um, Probably normal match until a random nothing rolled up by R-Truth, which Nakamura blatantly kicks out of before three. Then the ref fucks it up and counts three anyway, and uh, new, year, new year champion R-Truth. What? <laughs> what? What? Okay. Yeah, sure. um, I, ju- I just don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> like, I'm not sure if this was... Like Archer was supposed to win. Like it obviously wasn't supposed to end like this. That was weird because I like, carried on wrestling after the bell rang, and like, wait, what? <laughs> that was weird. The thing is, uh, right? He did kick out. Yeah, he blatantly kicked out like the year before three. So I don't know what the hell <laughs> bloody Mike Chioda was doing. Mike Chioda, <laughs> whatever his name is, <laughs> the referee. Mike Chioda. Mike Chioda, that's the guy. I don't know his name. Mike Chioda's the rapping guy from Lincoln Park. Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm even surprised even if you know who that is. I, I didn't do that. Uh... <laughs> um. I like the park. Quite like the park. Anyway, um, so yeah, that was weird. Um, so I was I was convinced that I was a cock up and they weren't supposed to win, but then Rusev comes down, turns heel, yay, uh, and challenges R2 to, to a title match right there and then, which again R2 wins with another roll up. Um, so was Truth supposed to win all along and it was it an early finish or was this like called on the fly like quick get go down there and try and make something of this? Um, yeah, very weird. Yeah, I don't know. Um, also, Rusev has been a face for all of five minutes, just like Elias. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And now he's, again, for the better. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, Rusev is a much better heel. And is he now teaming with Nakamura? Uh, it seems like it. Uh, which I'm kind of fine with, to be honest. If, uh, I am if... as well. Nakamura tweeted WCW earlier on today. Weird. Okay. I mean, to okay. be honest, Cryptic. that ballsing up is WCW-esque. Oh, yeah, very much so. Uh, Nakamura's had the belt 48 hours. Yeah, yeah. And has lost it to our truth uh, yeah. Who um, I don't predict will have it for long. No. Um, so I'll be okay with, like, if Rusev and Nakamura set up, like, some sort of anti USA feud, um, like, faction. I'll be okay, okay with that. That'd be cool. You think um, that could happen? Maybe. Why not? 
How many times have we seen that kind of thing before, though? Like a million, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> get them to do that. I'll be happy if they. T- yeah, I mean. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Haven't yeah. beat Shane and the Miz for the tag team titles. Yeah, why not? I'd be okay with that. Um, but yeah, that's just weird. It just felt everything about this felt off. I'm, yeah, it's strange. It is strange. I can't tell. I still can't tell if they're supposed to happen or they just called it on the fly and made this whole thing up. Because of the balls up from the ref. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, Siri had Rey Mysterio come down and bounce off a match with Samoa Joe until uh, Selena Vega comes down and uh, says a bunch of words. Mm. You should never read Nadra as much better than you. She's going to beat you up and then enjoy the attacks from behind. And um, that was just kind of it. But I like it. It carries on the feud. So I thought we were going to have this like Mexican team. Yeah, so you like it. Maybe. Maybe for the down line. Where the hell is Sin Cara? Come on. <laughs> yeah, come on, Sin Cara. Give the people right. what they want. Exactly, yeah. People want the Sin Cara. <laughs> we want Sin Cara. Yeah. So this is fine. This carries on a feud between... Yeah, um, sure. Fine uh, with that. Ray fine and uh, Andrade. Yeah, cool. Good stuff. Cool. Yeah. Then we had The Miz and Shane McMahon doing stuff. I skipped it. Sorry. Um, he didn't. Miz, he loved it. Yeah, I loved it. Anyway, but He's, he's actually ordered a Mizzo Mac t-shirt <laughs> off uh, WWEshop.com. I sure I have. I, I just, I, he loved it when Miz's dad showed up for no reason. <laughs> God almighty. Why? Every time Miz's... Uh, why is Miz dad, why is his dad a thing? Why? It's dumb. Well, he had to, you know, do the the deed so that Miz can be born, I guess. <laughs> well, I guess so, yeah. That's why Mrs. Dad is a thing. <laughs> uh, to... I feel like the, the real out Mrs. Mrs. Dad whenever he's like champion or something. I don't know. What's, I don't know. He used to be Zack Ryder's dad, didn't it? Did it? Yeah, Zack Ryder's dad was like always doing the rounds. He was on that Z long true uh, story <laughs> thing that Zack Ryder used to do. Sure, I guess and so. Zack Ryder's dad was like featured quite prominently on that. Fair play. I need to watch it. Um, yeah, this is the thing. You missed out, it was fun. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so that was fine that was that um, then we have a uh, el- elimination tag team match uh, with the Usos the New Day the Bar and Evan Machinery and the winners will um, go on to face Shane Miz and the Elimination Chamber where is Sanity where where are they yeah seriously weird why they... no whatever Killian Dane tweeted where yeah. where Sanity yeah where, where are they craziness and uh, the other one Alexander Wolf. yeah yeah tweeted sick of it yeah this, this, this is going well for WWE at the minute. Ooh. They're going to AEW probably. <laughs> probably, yeah. Give them 30 minutes. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, but it's a good match. I like this match actually. Yeah, very good. Uh, start off with Heavy Machinery eliminating the New Day, which is pretty big for them. Yep, good. And then the Bar eliminate Heavy Machinery. Great. And then Usos eliminate the Bar and win. So Usos versus Shane and Miz and Elimination Chamber. Interesting. <sighs> win, I need to see different tag teams. <laughs> fighting for the belts yeah Sanity should have been in there Sanity should have won IMO or Heavy Machinery should have won yeah someone new have, if you're going to introduce Heavy Machinery have them win that bloody match and yeah. fight for the tag team titles yeah seriously so strange I just don't get it sometimes yeah it's bizarre um, so then we had um, Danny Ryan come down um, called himself a hypocrite for grabbing around a, um, a title belt made of leather made from a dead cow uh, names the cow uh, Daisy and then it's a the, classic cow name. It, it is. is. And then the uh, crowd joins in saying, Thank you, Daisy. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, Wrestling fans are the best. Oh, yes. And also the worst. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, then he brings out uh, Rowan. No longer Eric Rowan, just Rowan. Side note Rowan's um, Titantron video, um, the O was replaced by a recycling symbol. It was, yeah. I like it. <laughs> and he got matched with old music, which I like. Um, so that's good. Makes sense. Um, it's interesting. Brian says how like Rowan is uh, Brian's intellectual equal uh, reads fancy books with fancy authors I can't pronounce uh, fair enough uh, throws his WWE title in the trash and brings out a brand new title made from hemp and wood well, and it's uh, very cool as well to it's be fair. pretty cool actually yeah. <laughs> I quite like it yeah it's very unique yeah yeah and I think that I mean, not many people get their own unique championship belt they yeah, just don't true. True. Uh, the fact that Daniel Bryan's got this I think it just shows what Daniel Bryan means to WWE yeah, yeah. and how strong this heel character of Daniel Bryan's is as well yeah. um, the belt itself is really cool um, there is a vote on our Twitter at the minute oh, it yeah. says um, if you didn't know um, let's be honest how many people knew what hemp was until today I knew what it was. I knew what it was, but <laughs> it's just uh, there are definitely people out there. I've seen the word hemp used so many times today. I was like, hmm, how many people knew what hemp was? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, AJ interrupted uh, um, Danny Bryan and actually uh, alluded to that and said, Did you smoke that title's prototype? <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is quite funny. Um, he's saying he was interrupted by Randy Orton, who, despite not having a match, still is in his pants. Sure, why not? Randy Orton um, just lives in pants. I'm, I'm probably sure he does, yeah. Yeah, him and Neville. Yeah. Pack. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Sorry, AEW fans. 
Uh, and then he was interrupted by Jeff Hardy during the break, who was interrupted by Mr. Raleigh, who was interrupted by Samoa Joe. And all of them want a title shot for Danny Bryan. Hmm, but I think there was some sort of match coming up soon. With yeah, yeah with to be honest, I mean, there, people. there isn't really anything for them, so yeah. they probably just scrap that idea. Pretty much, yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Wait. Elimination Chamber. That's that's coming up soon, isn't it? How how convenient it uh, is. Of course, yeah. And oh. Put all set to them in in the match, and then yeah, that be it. Oh, that's so convenient. Yeah. Wow. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Thanks, Triple H. Yeah, tr- it's it's a good job the Triple yeah. H is around, and the the timing is so convenient for this. Yeah. Wow. Good job. Good job, Triple H. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that was the thing. Um, of course, see Mustafa Ali in there as well, getting the title shot. Yeah, great. Very cool. After being eliminated by Nia Jackson, the Royal Rumble. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was that. Um, they all fought, and Brian snuck off with his new title, and uh, that was that. That was Smackdown. Cool. Uh, yeah, decent. Yeah, a lot of wrestling this week. Very Gosh. wrestling, <laughs> very wrestling heavy episode. Very wrestling heavy. Um, yeah, so... Um, I'm still tired. Yeah, we're still really tired. We've got wrestling duties to fulfil this weekend. We do. We're going to be at uh, Wrestling Hinkley's... Uh, wrestling in Hinkley's Fear of Falling tournament show. Oh yes, I'm gonna be. We'll be talking to uh, some of the guys there and uh, doing some stuff for Turnbuckle TV. Oh, yes. And you'll hear some of it on our podcast as well. And that's gonna be good. Very good. But um, yeah, this has been episode 89 of the Games and Graps podcast. We are a weekly video game and wrestling podcast that posts every single Saturday across podcast services everywhere. Everywhere. And YouTube.com forward slash Games Graps. Yes. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Sunny. I'm Finn. And we'll speak to you next time. Take care, guys. Goodbye. Thank you much. Goodbye.